everybody. A few years ago when I started this YouTube channel, I started it as a way to track the way that I was paying off my debt and how I was getting that done as quickly as I could. But what I found uh, was something super interesting. A lot of my students, my high school students, became very interested in the process, became interested in what I was doing, how I got into so much debt, and I found myself creating more and more videos for my students. So today, this video is specifically for all of my students and for any other band directors or parents that might be watching about how you guys can avoid some of the mistakes that I made regarding the biggest amount of debt that I took out, which was my student loans. And I wanna give you guys just a few um, bits of information about student loans. I think this is probably the most important bit of financial advice I know how to give. For a lot of you guys, your student loans or actually going to university is gonna be the most expensive decision that you make until you buy a house. In fact, the average student loan debt coming out of undergrad is around $30,000. The average student takes out anywhere between twenty-five dollars to $35,000 of student loan debt. Now, just since I finished my undergrad, that figure has gone up $7,000. When I graduated in 2011, the average was $23,000. Now the average is $30,000. And that figure will only grow for the foreseeable future. In fact, that student loan debt will cripple you for probably 15 to 20 years. I did some research before the stream started and the average person takes anywhere from 15 to 20 years to pay off their student loans. That's 15 to 20 years of 400, 500, $600 payments just for a university degree. So how do we avoid all of this? How do we get you not in student debt? Well, first we make sure that we don't uh, take out student loans, but then we still have to go to college. And some people are out there saying that maybe college isn't important or maybe college is overrated, but the data overwhelmingly that the number one way to improve financial status in life is to obtain a university or a college degree. So how can we obtain that college degree without going into large amounts of student debt? Well, the answer is very simple. It's either be really, really rich, go to the military, or find a boatload of scholarships and attend an affordable university. So today, the discussion that I want to have with you guys is how to do that. And since I'm a band director and the majority of the people that watch this channel are band students, I want to target specifically to you guys how you can find scholarships to go to university for free. That's right. Full rides on your instrument. The thing that you've been doing your whole your whole high school and middle school life, go to college completely free just to be in the band. And you don't even have to be a music major. So I want to bring in one of my friends who I met in 2016 after I finished my master's degree. Uh, I was at a small university called Navarro College working with the Guardian Journal and Bugle Corps, and I became aware of Josh Buckrucker. He's the director of bands there, and we formed a friendship, and now he comes to the schools that I work at to talk about his program, and more, more importantly to you, uh, how you can go to college for free. So Josh is going to talk a little bit, of course, about his program, but he's going to talk more in general about all of the world of scholarships that exist for you all in the world of band and music really at large. I graduated high school thinking that I had to go to a large university, I had to take out loans, and that there were no scholarships available if I was going to study music. Josh is here to tell you that that is absolutely not the case. So I'm going to bring in Josh right now. Josh, how you doing? How you doing, Caleb? I'm, I'm super me. good. Uh, I know that we talk about this all the time whenever you come visit my students, and I'm, I don't know why we haven't thought to do this live stream sooner. So if you could briefly just introduce yourself, uh, talk a little bit about, about you, what you do, and then we'll just jump right into the whole world of college loans. Oh, well, wonderful. Hey, so uh, first of all, uh, I want to thank Caleb for having me on the show. Um, this, this, is, uh, this is an important topic. I feel like a lot of people don't uh, know all the ins and outs of getting college scholarship, uh, band scholarship in general, and what you can do to get the most out of your college scholarship. So um, I'll introduce myself a little bit. Uh, my name is Josh Buckrucker. I'm the director of bands at Navarro College. Uh, we're located in Corsicana, Texas. Uh, I've been the director of bands here for uh, roughly about seven years now. Uh, this is about uh, just under 10 years that I've been in higher uh, education and so uh, in dealing with scholarships and and how to uh, how to award scholarships and what we're looking for and all that. So uh, a lot of a lot of good information is going to be on the show today. Uh, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm, fr I'm from West Texas and from Abilene, Texas, actually. And so um, once I graduated Abilene uh, or Abilene Cooper, Abilene Cooper, I traveled all the way over to uh, North Carolina and attended a private university over there in uh, in North Carolina, Methodist University. And then I, uh, after I finished 
uh, in North Carolina, worked a little bit, went up to uh, uh, Washington State, got my master's at Washington State. And then uh, after that, came back down here and uh, had been having a great time at Navarro College. When I first got here, the band program was only 23 band members. And I tell you, that was, uh, that was a big shock, something uh, different to me uh, coming from larger band programs. But uh, I tell you what, after spreading the word and, and really uh, up in the standards a lot, uh, the band program has grown to uh, roughly over 130 uh, students and, uh, you know, over 55 music majors at one point. I mean, it's, uh, it's just been, it's been a very exciting, very fun time uh, in, in, at Navarro. So, yeah. John, um, before we get started, can I ask one quick question? Yeah. Are you paying off student loans right now? <laughs> I, uh, I've got... Um, uh, I've got roughly over $105,000 in student loans right now. Um, I, you know, I got a ton of scholarship in my, uh, in my undergraduate. And, uh, but what the problem was is I was, I was young and, and I didn't understand what, you know, what I was taking out. So I thought student loans were just, ah, oh, you know, student loans, everybody has to take out student loans. And, uh, that's not the, that's not the case whatsoever. Um, I spend every single year uh, uh, mentoring my current students on how they can get more money and and what they could do to not be in student loan debt. Because it right now I pay roughly about seven hundred dollars every month on student loans, and uh, I tell my students, I say, you know what kind of car I could be driving with seven hundred dollars more in my pocket every month, you know. Uh, so now do I, do I regret, um, uh, do I regret going to school? Not at all. I think going to, you know, college and going to university is very important. Um, do I regret taking out so much student loans for sure, especially whenever I could have went somewhere where I could have gone for free and I just didn't know of the opportunities. So, so that's a good start, I think, which is the thing that you and I both talked about before the stream started where we wanted to start. I wish that we would destigmatize in public education the world of community college or smaller universities, specifically because they are A, really, really inexpensive, and B, they're great places to start just from a teacher to student kind of aspect, culture, ratio thing. So can you talk about the benefits of starting at a community college or a smaller university, just kind of writ large, not even talking about the music aspect? Yeah. So um, first of all, I mean, when you go to a large university. If you're going to, you know, those places that have 25, 30,000 plus students, you're sitting in a classroom with 30, 40, 50, up to a hundred students at a time. Your professor's not even going to know who you are. Um, you know, and so when you go to a smaller, you know, junior college or a small university, um, you're looking at anywhere from, you know, 15 up to 25 students in a class at one time. That's a, that's a more uh, a personal relationship and, 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 uh, and connection with the, with the professor. And it's, it's, uh, it's just easier to ask questions and, um, and, and trans transfer from, or, or to tr go from high school into college. It's, it's just, uh, it, it, makes more sense to me. Um, second, the opportunities, you know, there's, like I said, there's, and you said, there's a stigma going to junior college right now. There's, there's a stigma, you know, it's, it's unfortunate. Uh, you know, when I was growing up in West Texas, the, uh, the, the idea of junior college was, you know, the strip mall down the road that, you know, people are teaching at and that people who couldn't graduate from high school or that didn't get good grades or whatever they go to. That is, that's completely, false at this point. I mean, uh, I can tell you, I've got multiple valedictorians that are part of my ensemble. I've got most of my ensemble as 3.5 GPA or above. And, uh, I mean, they're the smartest and most talented people I can, I can imagine. And, and, and you know, it's, uh, this stigma of being lesser than, you know, going to junior college is completely false. Um, and, and you can ask those who went to, uh, to junior college. I mean, once they graduated and transferred, like let's say I had a student come from wherever, come to Navarro for two years and go to SFA. Uh, when they graduate, their degree doesn't say, "Oh, I went to junior. I didn't. I didn't. I, I went to junior college for two years, or I went to Navarro for two years." No, it says SFA. Once they finish, you know, I mean, it's it's all the exact same 
degree. You know, the stigma is uh, is is crazy. You know, with junior college right now, especially since they're usually a heck of a lot cheaper. Oh yeah, you know, um, I like to, uh, I like you know, whenever I go out and I recruit, I like to bring uh, a uh, a bottle of water with me, and you know what I'll do is I'll 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 show you know two cups, right? Uh, I've got. Right here, I've got. Don't judge my record, Ralph Cup. I got an eight-year-old, so I and, and a medieval times cup. You know, of course, I got to have fun cups in my house. But anyways, you know, the the bottle of water is your entire degree, right? This is your undergraduate degree. When you pour in half of that bottle of water, so the first two years of your degree into this cup, I'm gonna sell this cup to you for five dollars. Okay, a cup of water, five dollars. I'm gonna sell you this one. It's big and shiny. Right, it's made of glass, whatever. I'm gonna pour the exact same water into it, right? Half of it. I'm gonna sell you this cup for fifty dollars. Which one would you rather buy? It's the exact same water. It really is. And all you're getting is a big shiny cup. That's it, right? Now, if you can afford this and you want to go and you're rich and do it, go right ahead. Go right. Ahead. But I tell you what, when I was growing up, I didn't have. A, a wad of cash in my pocket. I didn't have a ton of money. You know, when I was graduating high school, I was dirt poor. And, uh, and I'll tell you what, I, I could have really benefited from someone coming into my school and saying, Hey, you can get the exact same thing for $1,500 versus $20,000, uh, at a major university. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's crazy to me that it's so cheap. To, to attend junior college and get the exact same degree. And in the best part is the exact same experience that you would at a major university. Uh, I mean, we, we have marching band, we have uh, wind ensemble and, and a symphonic band. We have multiple jazz bands. We have combos, we have uh, chamber ensembles. We have, uh, we have a guard program that does uh, compete. We've got all these different opportunities that you're gonna get at the major universities as well. Um, so, I mean, even the travel, I mean, all the travel and the, and the uh, experience performing, all of that is going to be at your junior colleges as well as your four-year institutions. You're just paying a fraction of the cost to do it. So Josh, let's talk about, now let's get into the nitty gritty and talk about some scholarships. Before we, again, yeah. even get into the world of music scholarships, the, the smaller community college uh, um, and the smaller university settings have a ton of money to offer in the realm of automatic automatically triggering scholarships. Now, I know that when I went to UNT, my SAT scores qualified me for $1,000 a semester, which was about, uh, was about a 25% academic scholarship. But that pales in comparison to what would automatically trigger for says Navarre and what, what I guess what there is other community colleges can you talk about the scholarships and the opportunities that are automatic not even including the music scholarships that make the smaller slash community college world more advantageous oh yeah so for instance uh, i'll just give you an example to go to i'm going to use navarro a lot yeah uh, no i'm not i mean i'll boast about navarro of course uh to everybody but um just in general junior college um navarro is to go full time. That's twelve semester hours. I know a lot of high schoolers and a lot of students are not going to understand what twelve semester hours are, or fifteen, or eighteen, or whatever. But full time at Navarro is twelve, and to 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 pay for those twelve hours is roughly about fifteen hundred dollars. That's that's a semester fifteen hundred dollars to go to school. Um, and I'll I'll tell you if you did the same thing. At you know, at a major university, you're looking anywhere from the cheap universities, cheap, I mean, real cheap ones, anywhere from seven thousand dollars all the way up to twenty thousand dollars for public institution, and then twenty all the way up to thirty to thirty-five thousand dollars per semester per semester per semester to go to school. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy how expensive it is to go to school at those men. Whereas it's only fifteen hundred dollars. You know, I mean, that's, 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 you know, to get those scholarships. Now, non-band scholarships, super easy as well. Um, your senior year, during the, uh, during the, the fall semester of your senior year, you should be on financial aid websites for the colleges that you want to go to. And I say colleges, don't just choose one, right? The financial aid websites, 
and go to the, to the uh, uh, apply for financial aid or apply for scholarships. You'll see on the left hand side there, there's a scholarships tab. Uh, yeah, look at this, apply for all scholarships. What that's gonna do is it's gonna take all of your information and apply it to every single scholarship that is applied to your situation. Um, typically that's anywhere from $500 all the way up to $1,500. So if you're listening correctly, you could have gotten all of your tuition already paid for without even getting the band scholarship yet. I mean, that's, that's crazy. That's awesome. Right? So, uh, check out the financial aid website at all the colleges that you're looking at and apply for all of the, the, the scholarships that you're able to apply for. Now I'm not talking about, you know, these are scholarships that, are like, hey, what can you make out of duct tape? Or hey, what can you like for your degree, you know, physics, you know, uh, project or anything like that? No, I'm just talking about general scholarships. You don't even really have, you probably have to write an essay, right? Everybody requires an essay over something. Uh, and so after that, you get applied for so many scholarships. So financial aid website on your college's website uh, is going to be first stop for sure. And then can you just talk a little bit about uh, there's this new wave in in public education. It didn't exist when I was there, but your the ability to win scholarships or to be automatically awarded scholarships based off of your family income or based off the fact that you might be a first generation college student. For sure. So um, we have something at Navarro. I don't know if it's at a lot of the, the different colleges. I'm sure they have something similar to that. Up, but we have something called Trio Services. What this is going to do if you're a first generation college student. If your um, if your uh, family income is lower than you know, let's say I think thirty, I, th I believe the, the cap is around thirty thousand dollars a year. If your family income is pretty low, um, you get applied for automatic scholarships um, right out the door. I mean, so uh, that's that's one thing to keep in mind if your if your family income is low, or if you're a first generation college student, uh, or it, you know, th there's a whole bunch of reasons. Um, if your SAT scores or ACT scores are high, if, uh, if you did well in, you know, if you joined a lot of clubs in high school, or if you were part of a lot of organizations, if you did a lot of community service there, I mean, here's the thing guys, whenever I was young, my dad gave me some amazing, amazing, uh, uh, advice. And I mean, it was, it was just one thing he said, if you work hard now, you won't have to later. I mean, man, that's just, just a little tiny bit of advice, but I worked my buns off in high school and in college and through life because I don't want to work hard whenever I'm older. I don't want, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, I do work hard because I did when I was younger and now it's just a habit, but I worked my buns off to get a big scholarship to college and even bigger opportunities after I leave college. And, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll say, take that advice to the bank because it'll work every single time. If you, uh, if you go out and you, uh, and you make all region, that's a larger scholarship. If you make area, that's a larger scholarship. If you're an all state performer, I mean, I don't know about all the other colleges and universities. That's a 100% tuition scholarship. I mean, you don't have to pay any tuition. If you worked hard enough to make all state, you get that stuff paid for. And I will tell you that is a little different uh, than the big universities. I, I, I happened to make the Allstate band once, and not only did I not get any money because of it at North Texas, they didn't even ask me. They didn't even care. Just there's just so many of those upper level that are going there. It's not even an option from a financial standpoint. There's an advantage to go to the smaller community or, or smaller university where that's going to trigger some automatic rewards. Yeah. Um, before we go on to music scholarships, I just want to talk about this world that I'm, I'm slowly becoming aware of, of quality universities, specifically in Texas that are outside. Nice record Ralph cup there, by the way, <laughs> just uh, drank some, some of my degree. Small universities that are in rural areas outside of the major metropolitan areas. So I'm talking about Navarro, A&M commerce, my West Texas a and I'm talking about Tarleton. There are quality universities outside of the major metropolitan areas. Can you just talk for a second about some of the advantages about why that might be and why they should choose to go and get away from all that just for a little bit, if even for one or two years. Well, I'll tell you, um, uh, being away from the metropolitan area, it has a lot of advantages. Uh, one, um, it, the scenery is, it's not all just 
you know, smog and buildings everywhere. And I mean, it's, you know, being out in the country a little bit, Charlton, uh, you know, uh, AM Commerce, um, and Navarro, you know, being away from the big cities, you get a, a little bit of opportunity to just get away from the hustle and bustle of a major, major uh, city. Um, you don't have to worry about traffic, you know, getting to the campus. I know a lot of our students live on campus, of course. I mean, that's another thing, by the way. Dorms on a junior college campus are pretty pretty rare. Um, and one thing, Navarro, and I know there's other junior colleges such as uh, like like Glenn uh, that have uh, that have uh, dorms on campus. And so um, that's something you want to look at as well. And you want to see what the dorm situation is like. Um, and, and some of those major universities, those dorms and those those buildings and everything are crazy old. Uh, and I, I mean, I remember, you know, being in my dorm, uh, at my university in North Carolina and, uh, I had, I had like, uh, I had a, a heater and air conditioner unit in the room that would start making noise at like 2 AM. I had to beat it with a shoe to get it to shut up. You know I mean? And I had, I, I had a, a dorm building that looked like an old abandoned haunted, you know, hotel, you know? And so look at, look at the idea, look at, look at what you're getting by, traveling away from the, the, the major cities a little bit, getting away. Uh, you know, now, am I going to say that there's a lot to do in those little, you know, the, the outskirts cities? No, there's not a lot to do. That being said, Dallas, Fort Worth, now I'm talking about Navarro. Dallas, Fort Worth is, is less than an hour drive away. Um, you know, you can go up to Waxahachie and do a lot of shopping. You can go down to Waco, it's less than an hour drive. I mean, it's right in the middle of all of these amazing places. And here's the other thing, the, the, the opportunity to be hired for gigs and performances and stuff like that. I don't need to be, you know, I'm talking as a student now, I don't need to be in the top jazz band at UNT to get a gig playing jazz, you know, down the street at, you know, somebody's house or at one of the businesses. I, I mean, all of our students at Navarro get the opportunity to play in what we call gig band. And they travel and perform uh, gigs all around Navarro, all around Waxhachie, all around uh, all of these small towns. The, the gigs are there. And, you know, if you go up in those big cities, UTA or, or, uh, or, or North Texas or SFA, they're going to, I mean, there's going to be a dime a dozen people that can play those gigs. But whenever you're in the small areas, man, you get hired all the time. You get a lot of money. It's pretty nice. So, Josh, let's jump in now to the meat of the matter, which is getting a music scholarship, specifically getting a large music scholarship and how they should go about doing that. And obviously, you're going to talk about Navarro because that's your lens that you're through. But if you're watching, just know this, this idea exists in a lot of the universities we've already been talking about, whether it's uh, AM Commerce or Tarleton or West Texas a and These opportunities exist. And Josh is going to tell you how to go about doing that and what the process is. Okay, good. So the first thing. Uh, parents, this message is to the parents. If you if you want your students to get a big scholarship whenever they graduate high school, start them on oboe, start them on bassoon, start them on uh, you know if if it's a uh, a percussionist, make sure they're taking piano lessons. Um, if it's uh, you know someone who's playing jazz bass, you know like just electric bass. Get them started on some upright bass lessons. I mean, those things, you know, those things that make those students so valuable is their, uh, their what we call color instruments. Those are the only one person in the band gets to be that person. And so they, they get those large scholarships right off the bat. Um, you know, Caleb was talking about oboe and bassoon being, you know, college gold. I can tell you there are multiple full ride bassoon scholarships out there that are just wasted every year because there's no bassoon players that are ready to play and that are ready to get in there. Uh, and so uh, getting those opportunities to those students, I mean, th th those, those instruments, those students early, very important. Now, the next thing, what is music scholarship? Now, uh, in, in addition to being the director of bands, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be the chair of the music department here at Navarro College. And I'll tell you that I see a lot of music students come in and out of my door that have the question, how much scholarship can I get? How much scholarship can I get? I'll tell you, here are your tips and your tricks, okay? If you take anything away from the whole video, take this away. Scholarship is like a big pot of gold. 
we all get to start with a certain amount of scholarship that is budgeted for our programs every year. Uh, and so every time a student comes in auditions, we take some of that out, and give it to that student, give some of that out, give some of that to the next student, so on and so forth until the pot is empty. Okay. Um, we give scholarships out as early as November of the year before. So if you're a senior, I, I plead to you to audition as early as you possibly can. Um, if you are auditioning in November, December, January, February, March, you're almost guaranteed a scholarship. After March, you're looking at the scholarships dwindling. So the, the directors have to give less and less and less and less. Okay. So your first tip audition early okay the next thing okay if you know where you want to go you want to get good scholarship contact that director as early as your sophomore year and schedule times to come out and visit okay be in that director's uh uh mind's eye have com uh com or communication sorry communicate with those directors um you know via email Ask if you can come out, sit in an ensemble rehearsal, ask if you can come out and go to a football game and experience the band, you know, come out on Saturday. You know, that what that's going to do is it's going to make me remember you. Uh, it's going to make the director remember who you are and how much time you want to put into the program. That's important. Uh, and I'll tell you, we're not looking for God's gifts to instrument playing. You know, some of the major universities, and I'm talking small colleges. Now, some of the major universities are looking for God's gift to trumpet and baritone and, and trombone and all that. We're not looking for that. At the small uh, colleges and universities, we're looking for good people. We're looking for people who are going to work hard and they're going to uh, put in the time that's needed to make the ensemble the best it possibly can be. Uh, one thing that I like to uh, I like to say whenever we go out recruiting is uh, why why do anything in life if you're not going to be absolutely awesome at it? Why go to work? Why you know do chores at home if you're just gonna be halfway? You know uh, why do anything in life if you're not gonna put everything into it? And uh, that's what our students do, and that's the kind of student I want. Uh, you don't have to be God's gift to trumpet for me to to want to give you as much scholarship. What I want is a good recommendation from your director. And I want uh, a a good uh, a good um, good manners audition. You know, dress nice. Yes, sir. No, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. And and just to see that you have the potential to be an amazing person, part of our program. That's you know, that's that's it. A audition early. Uh, you know, work hard now. You know, uh, and and you know, get out there and and and. Uh, just give all all the uh, all the manners you can, and all the all the the effort that you can. That's what word I was looking for was effort. Um, now, playing those color instruments, auditioning early, communicating with the directors, uh, those are all great. Now, how do I compete? How do I win the scholarship? Um, register for your audition early uh, on the Navarro College Band website you'll see that uh, we have audition registration links. You're gonna see that on every single band website, okay? The audition registration uh, will take you right to forms you fill out, okay? I've seen, I've actually helped students to fill them out at, you know, Commerce, at, at SFA, at, you know, even at Navarro, I've helped students apply to our own places, right? Um, you know, fill out that audition registration form uh, it'll typically be on a how to audition or how to join or anything like that uh, and and get that in early so that they uh, you can see on the left hand side there uh, go up. Oh, yeah. Our, our, we have it as a big click. Right. You'll go in there. You'll fill out that form. Um, and then what's going to happen is the director is going to contact you and ask you questions. OK. Um, respond. Be as communi uh, communicative or communicate as much as possible because that's going to make that director remember you for sure. Okay. Um, and that's, that's really the biggest, those are the biggest things. I mean, uh, and, and once you audition, make sure that they know that you have, you know, if you're auditioning for another place, make sure they know that you have other options. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. It makes you a little bit more enticing whenever I know that you're going, you're thinking about going somewhere else. I'm going to fight for you. Uh, that's one thing. Oh man, I am one stubborn son of a gun. 
Uh, and if I know that I could win you, I'm going to work to win you. Uh, and, and that's the kind of stuff that you want at any program. You want someone to, who wants you to be there for sure. Josh, you and I were talking before the stream, and I, you said something interesting that I hadn't thought about in this particular way. And I see this all the time with students. Usually it's uh, involving like a school like TCU or SMU, which are both good universities, but they'll say, I got $50,000 to go to TCU. Okay, well, that's great. That will last you about a year and maybe a little bit of your sophomore year. So can yeah. you talk, and you use the phrase specifically, $500 isn't $500 at, this, at every school. So can you talk about that and why maybe a $1,500 scholarship at Navarro might actually be better than a $50,000 scholarship at TCU or another private university? Yeah. So one thing that I know high school students, they love this. Um, going out there and saying, I received, and, and you know, a lot of high school counselors are to blame for this because they'll post how much someone got from whatever university. They won't say they got this much of percentage paid for. You know, if we changed it all to percentages, oh my gosh, it'd be awesome because uh, I could I could tell you $500 at Navarro, that's a third, that's that's 33% of your degree, you know, uh, at, at Navarro versus if you got 500 bucks at, you know, let's let's say SMU, which is, I think it's like $28,000, 30 some odd thousand dollars a year. If you got $500 at SMU, you got enough to pay for your lunch. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's, you know, it's much different. It's much different uh, at, at at the different schools. Look at the percentages. Look at the percentages. Um, you know, most. Of, I'll tell you, this is something that a lot of schools cannot say, and uh, and I love that we can at Navarro. Is we scholarship every single student to be in the band program. If you if you audition and uh, and you make it into the band program, we scholarship you no matter what. Now the amount. Is different, but I can tell you probably the the smallest scholarship amount that we have uh, in the band program is right around four hundred, five hundred dollars. I mean, that's like the smallest scholarship that we typically give out. And so, if you're auditioning early and you made region or you made state or, or area or anything like that, or if you worked hard, you got a good recommendation from your director, you're gonna get anywhere from sixty to seventy five, all the way up to hundred percent of your tuition paid for by just working hard in high school and doing your job and, and, you know, having fun in band, you know, and, and here's the thing. Um, yeah, you may have only got a thousand dollar scholarship from, from, from Navarro and you got a $50,000 scholarship from Baylor, but what was the percentage of your degree that was covered by that scholarship? That's so important. A lot of people don't think about that. They just think, oh, I got $50,000. You know, that's like, you know, I have this really bad habit of buying good deals, you know, on like on Amazon or something. I'll look at the daily deal. I'm like, yeah, I'll look at my wife, Jessica, that's a great deal. Uh, you know, but and then I'll buy it. But it's like, did, you know, I didn't need it. You know, I don't need the good deals all the time. I mean, $50,000. Yeah. You ever think that Amazon just marks stuff down 50%, but it's really, it was never <laughs> that price in the first place. You know, like, that's what I feel like the degrees are so expensive at these other places where you're getting the exact same thing for, you know, a fraction. It's just crazy to me. Especially if, uh, especially if, you know, you're just looking to get your first couple of years of, you know, maybe music theory or some of your basic uh, math and science credits out of the way. And then you do transfer to a large university. A lot of the times people in these smaller institutions, they know that the way that the game works yep. and you, you will actually help those students transfer to a larger university. Can you just talk? Um, and Sean, I saw your question about transferring to Navarro. We're going to start with transferring out because a lot of people will start there with the intention of going away. You know that going into it and you help them with that. Can you just talk oh, about yeah. that? Very first question I ask all of my students. Very first question. They'll walk in the door. This is my, I'm, I'm the saxophone professor, not only the director of bands, but I also teach saxophone. And I have my saxophone students in their first lesson. And I say, where are you going next? And what we do is we plan the entire two years off of how to get them to where they're going next. And if they don't know where they're going next, then we plan for about six months of all the different places they can go, why they should go there, and what they can do to get as much scholarship as they can once they do go there. Um, Navarro isn't the end game. I, I say that to all my students. This is not the end. This is the stepping stone towards where you're going next. 
And I want to be that person who helps you through that process. Um, I am, you know, I love being the advisor to all the band students. Uh, I have a great team. Uh, my, my associate director of bands, Tim Nutting, he's an advisor as well to, to all of our students. And our goal is that our students are successful where they're at now and where they're going next. Um, one thing that's cool, uh, we have this thing called Pathways. Um, all of our students can transfer to really any institution in the state of Texas, but it's a, it's a, it's, we have a partnership with Texas A&M University of Commerce where uh, they can they can go straight to commerce and it'd be it'd be seamless there. Uh, the other colleges, uh, UTA, Tarleton, SFA, um, Sam Houston, uh, UNT, all of those are pathway schools that that Navarro works with uh, specifically, so the the transition can be seamless as well. Um, so the transfer process is is quite simple. And uh, one thing I was telling Caleb before is the majority of our band students, actually 100% of our band students at this point that transfer to the college of their choice after they finish Navarro are all offered scholarship. Uh, our students are wanted by major universities. Uh, and I, I, that's proven by all those directors coming and visiting. Uh, and we have another director coming on Friday um, of this week where we have Carter Biggers from Texas, uh, Women's University is coming to visit and talk to our students on Friday. So uh, Chris Beatty is a, a good friend of mine at Texas A&M University Commerce. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I I just did a clinic with uh, with um, oh my God Brian uh, uh, Youngblood at TCU. Uh, you know, and that, that's it's just it's great partnerships and relationships uh, with other directors and other universities uh, that make transferring from Navarro so seamless and so easy. So. So along with transferring out, uh, let's go to the, the opposite end, transferring in. Um, one of my students, or former students, I guess, uh, his name is Sean. He's he's studying music at Hill College, you know, one of the small community colleges. Yeah, yeah. He's looking around at transferring in. Uh, what would the process be like for him? What is the what does the transfer credit look like? And then kind of to, to zoom out even a little more, transfer credits for students who have dual credits. So how, when oh, you yeah. move to Navarro, what does that look like, whether you're coming from an actual community college or from high school? So my first... The very first thing, and this is a lot of high school students, a, a lot of high school directors don't know this. Um, if you've got a student who wants to major in music, if you've got a student that wants to major in music, do not do the dual credit. Um, now, I, I love dual credit, especially if you want them to be able to go to a place that's cheap. Um, because dual, once they get into, uh, I have a student right now, all state tuba player. I got a great student, all state tuba player. He he did dual credit all throughout high school, finished like, I don't know, like 12, 13, 14, 15 hours of dual credit, came into Navarro. Now, I can't scholarship him as much as I could because he's not full time. I, I can't find enough credits to throw on his to throw on his degree to make him full time. And so he's being penalized for all that now. And the music degree, as you know, Caleb is theory and ear training in piano, freshman first semester, theory ear training piano, second semester. I mean, it's it's in order, it's in order. And if you go out of order, you're behind another year or behind another year, you know, you have to wait until the next fall to be able to, to get back on the, the process. Uh, so dual credit, good in some circumstances. If they're a music major, I would, I would shy against it, me personally, uh, because it's gonna hurt them in the long run with getting scholarship. Okay, uh, two. Transferring to Navarro, super easy, super, super easy. Uh, one, uh, junior colleges, most junior colleges have what's called a uh, uh, an all acceptance policy. Whereas if you have a GPA of like a 1.5, you're still going to get accepted. That being said, you're going to be put on what's called academic watch. <clears throat> and so people are going to make sure that you're doing okay with your uh, with your classes the whole time you're there. Um, but if you're transferring from Hill College, from Blinn College, from, from TVCC, any of those, it's easy. All you got to do is apply to the college, get your transcripts sent from your current college over to Navarro, and then contact me. And then we go from there. I mean, I, I, I you know, I'll go through all the forms with you. I'll go through uh, pretty much the entire process. I've even had students send me their, their documentations for me to walk over to the registrar's office because the registrar's office is busy, but they all know who I am. 
So if I walk in there with the documents and hand them to the uh, to the registrar's office, it's immediate. They, they're like, okay, we'll help out this student right now. Um, that's something, you know, financial aid, registrars, they're busy people. They're super busy people. So they're going to, uh, they're going to take a really long time to get all that documentation uh, finished for you. When you send it straight through, or if you talk to me, or if it's taking a long time, we can get that stuff taken care of in a heartbeat. Um, and it, the other thing is, you know, once you transfer in, it's really seamless. It's, it really is. It's just like, uh, you, you just, you know, it, it's not hard whatsoever. I'll tell you that much for sure. You know, you just send in your documentation, we get you on the roster of the band, you show up for band camp and boom, it's done. Um, as we're starting to wrap up, if you are watching and you do have any questions, whether it's about specifically Navarro or just kind of anything in general about finding a music scholarship, you can go ahead and ask those questions. Um, I just want to wrap up and say that I think if I could do this as we start to wrap up, um, if I could do this <laughs> all over again, I, I had friends who showed up to UNT and they were like, yo, I turned down a full ride at blah, blah, blah school. And uh, I was like, man, I didn't even know that full rides existed. And now with the benefit of hindsight, having paid off, you know, $85,000 of student loans, plus, you know, that was, that's all the loans and the interest. If I could do it over again, I would have absolutely started at a smaller to mid-sized school for a couple of years and then transferred into a larger university. So I could still have the, the fancy name on the piece of paper, but without all of the crippling debt. I, th I think that's the biggest thing really all my students would learn and would take away. I don't, I don't have to make the same mistake that I did or that you did for that matter. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, one thing that that's really stuck with me is, you know, I get these calls from, from Methodist university or, or Washington state about, you know, being an alumni and Hey, can you say, can you do, would you be willing to donate, you know, to the scholarship funds or would you be willing to give back as an alumni? Every single time I answer my phone, I'm like, Hey, tell you what, as soon as I pay off my student loans in about 70 years, I will, uh, I, I will donate, you know, to your cause. I mean, that's, that's the thing. I mean, it's student loans are, they really are crippling. You said the right word. They are crippling. My wife and I, you know, we talk about finances every single month. And one of the biggest ones is student loans. Um, so we're trying to get you away from that. That's what it is. I don't want my students to leave uh, college with student loan debt. That's, I mean, that's, that's horrible at this point. I just got a question uh, texted to me. Uh, do you have to major in music to get a scholarship at Navarro? Oh, no, not at all. You know, that's one of the big things too. Uh, I think my biggest, um, sco my, my largest scholarship student at this point is a, a business major. Uh, so clarinet player, he's a business major. Um, you know, he, he, he's in a phenomenal player. Uh, we played blue shades with him uh, uh, like last year or so. I mean, just, uh, just, wow kind of player and so uh business major yeah not not, not at all needing to be uh you know a music major does it help uh helps our department yeah but uh but no it doesn't help you for for you know your scholarship at all i mean you can you can be an accounting major you can be general science or general studies you can be a computer science you can be petroleum navarro has like the largest john deere program in the nation if you're you know you're your country person you want to work on tractors, man? Come and work on tractors and play in the band. I've had a couple of those, uh, a couple of those, those uh, country boys in my band, and man, they're great. They're I love when they just list all the heavy stuff for me. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. You know, we had a um, we had uh, some some of the staff from Midwestern State up in Wichita Falls that came down, and they were listening to our kids, and they were talking about scholarshiping one of my second band clarinet players. You don't need to be a top band region player to grab a scholarship at these universities, and I'm sure that you find that is all that is is the case all the time. You find some second band kid that you're like, you know what? I can see that you need some help, and you you can play your instrument well. Can you just talk about mm -hmm. that a little bit. Oh yeah, I'll give you a personal uh, representation. My wife, um, she was a she was a flute player, a phenomenal flute player, but she didn't she didn't really enjoy band. I guess, or the band directors whenever she was in, in high school. And uh, uh, we actually met in high school is why I know all this, but uh, she was in third band. And I'll tell you what, if I was, if I went and, and saw her and her third band back, you know, and whenever she graduated and I know, uh, and, and she came and talked to me and played and auditioned as well as she could play. It doesn't matter if you're in third, fourth, fifth, sixth, first band, whatever, if you play well and you put in the time for your audition and you, uh, you know, your scales and you know, everything, man, I tell you what, you're going to get, 
the scholarship that you deserve for sure. Uh, I mean, if you have a good sound and good technique, um, we're, we want you. And I think, uh, I think specifically if you're in Texas where there's a, a lot of universities and b a lot of, uh, really, really high quality programs, it doesn't matter that you're not in the top band because you make quality sounds, you have the work ethic, you understand the Texas band system, and you can go get that. That's another thing, like, I was talking to one of my students, and she just didn't even understand the concept that you're not a top band player, but there's still literally large chunks of scholarship that are out there and that exist for you. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the, the scholarship, like I said, I mean, um, you can play... You can play oboe over soon, and I mean, you've, auto, you've automatically got a large scholarship. Uh, or if you're if you're a strong lower clarinet player, like if you play that second, third part, and you play it well, uh, and then we've got someone who comes in and auditions and plays a heck of an audition and, and was really good in the higher range, but not as good in the lower range, um, then then we're gonna we're gonna look at that low range really good and scholarship for that because we know that's what we want for our wind ensemble we that's what we want for our, for our ensembles um now another thing if you double on instruments if you're a clarinet player but you also play saxophone if you're a flute player you also play saxophone if you're a um, horn player you also play trumpet um those things are important as well because that uh gives you the opportunity to play in jazz bands that gives you the opportunity to play in on, uh, chamber ensembles that also help out the program so uh, definitely, definitely look into, uh, to, you know, learning multiple instruments. If you haven't already, I, I, I'll tell you one thing that's just a killer. I had, I have a saxophone student that is just a phenomenal saxophone student and his director put him on Barry sax his entire four years. Oh, it's just, I mean, when he came in, he said, I said, what do you play? He, and he said, Barry sax. And I said, Oh, you play saxophone. He said, no, I've only played Barry sax. It was just like, oh, it's just crippling. He's a music major now. He's played all the different saxophones. He's he's a phenomenal, phenomenal student. He's gonna get offered scholarship all over the place. But directors, man, get get your uh, get your your students diversified on on the different instruments for sure if you can. All right, Josh. Um, as we start to wrap up, I I told you I would give you a chance to plug Navarro. Is there anything that you want to plug about Navarro specifically before we kind of uh, close this off here as we approach one hour? Um, I'll tell you, um, I think I've talked, I've talked a good bit about Navarro. I'll tell you one thing that I mentioned is I've been here seven years now and, uh, this program has become, uh, more than just a job. It, it's become a passion. It really has. And, uh, you know, all of my, my staff, uh, all of the faculty that have, that have helped us get to the point that we're at, um, you know, that's another thing. Each, each one of our instruments has got a designated, professor that uh, adjunct professor that teaches them um there are our percussion uh coordinator tim nutting has done s some phenomenal stuff with the percussion department um you know taking them out and, and joining circuits for indoor percussion competitions our guard program uh with with jamie kovar uh going out there and competing against you know and becoming the uh uh independent a class champions uh in 2000 you know 18 i think is 18 uh, it's just, I mean, we've got so many amazing opportunities for all of our students. Um, our jazz band tours and plays regularly. Our wind ensemble has been invited to Carnegie Hall, has been invited to Ireland, has been invited to uh, to all over the, the entire United States um, to, to perform. Uh, we were actually supposed to perform at Carnegie Hall this year, but COVID. So, um, you know, that's it's just some 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 unfortunate timing. Uh, that being said, we've got some phenomenal players. We got some phenomenal people, and uh, our staff is amazing. and And I hope I hope that uh, you want to join us. And like I said, uh, I'm not a scary person. I, I know I don't think I am. At least I don't know. Some of my students might disagree, but uh, but I'll tell you, if you call, if you text, if you email, I'm going to get back to you pretty quickly, and uh, and we're going to get you into the program that you enjoy the product. Um, you know, that's, that's one thing, no matter where you go, you know, Navarro or, uh, you know, TVCC or yeah, any, any college that you go to make sure you're going to enjoy the product that you're going to create. That's, that's so important. You know, um, that's one thing that I pride myself on at Navarro is putting out a product that we can all be proud of. And, uh, and you can see that by, if you go to our YouTube channel, Navarro college band, 
and check out all of our YouTube videos, you'll see some products in there that are pretty awesome. We do fun shows. Um, you know, last year we did a, uh, a show uh, based on that 1990, this is marching band, uh, with off that 1990s movie, The Mask with Jim Carrey. That was a lot of fun. We did, uh, the, the year before that, we did a show based off of that uh, Netflix series, Stranger Things. Uh, I mean, we, we typically will throw in dances. We're throwing big drum core hits. I'm a huge drum core fan. That's actually how I met uh, uh, Caleb here, you know, with, with Guardians. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's who I am. That's who uh, Mr. Nutting is. And we're going to throw big, exciting stuff in there. Typically, all of our marching shows end with standing ovations and people going crazy, you know. And so that's, uh, that's the excitement. That, you know, that's what we want to have. So, One late question here. One late question that I want to share. What do you think about transferring without graduating from the two-year school versus transferring and also graduating from the two-year school? And then uh, I guess he means transfer to a four-year school. The pros and cons, maybe actually finishing like that two-year program or just transferring ASAP. Uh, one thing I can tell you is you're going to get transfer scholarship, which like a, a commerce. And and uh, I know one, one institution in particular, um, University of Arkansas Monticello, has a transfer scholarship that if you come to Navarro for two years um, and you finish up, you know, all of your degree at your associate's degree at Navarro, um, they will pay for all of your tuition and transfer scholarship at University of Arkansas Monticello. Um, so all of your tuition is paid for there. And then the band scholarship is on top of that. So you get your housing pretty much almost paid for as well. We actually had one of our, our base clarinet students took advantage of that, that uh, transfer scholarship there. That's, that's an important one. Uh, that and two, you're getting more experience on your instrument. You're getting more time. You're getting better. Uh, I can tell you after high school, uh, if you're a music major, you focus so much more on your instrument. You become tons better and more technical uh, on your instrument. And so that's that's uh, something that's that those major universities are going to look for as well. And they're going to scholarship more because of it. So you're saying get to the place where there's money the quicker, the quick, yes, as quickly as you for can. Sure. Go find money, free money. Go find the free money because that's important, right? Uh, don't don't go somewhere just because of the name. Don't go for the buildings. Don't go for you know the the shiny you know ness of it. Go where the money is because, ladies and gentlemen, it's it's the same degree no matter where you go. Um, now, d do I think it's important for you to get a good a good uh, experience? Yes. You know, if you're going, if, if there's a, a two year college that is not going to be a, uh, a good experience, then don't go there. Go somewhere, you know, the money's going to be and you're going to get a great experience. Josh, thank you for your time. Uh, more importantly, thank yeah. you for your knowledge and your expertise. Um, you and I, I know, uh, have been now partnering to find student scholarships for a long time. This is a relationship that I value. Uh, I appreciate everything you do for my current and my former students. I love that you're helping my former students, you know, go to college for free. And I hope that this helped some people that were watching or provided them some tools on how they can go to college for free and not endure the same pain of debt <laughs> that you and I have endured. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully they can just leverage all the, all the band skills that we've been giving in the past couple of years. So thank you again. Thank you, Caleb. I appreciate it. All right. And for all of the rest of you guys who are uh, watching, thank you for watching as always. If you have a question or uh, comments, feel free to reach out. I'll go ahead and link as many things as I can uh, in the description for when I publish this video later. And as always, thanks for watching.